Hello and welcome to the fourth and final video in this series on Shopify theme development. In the first video, we covered what a theme is and where it sits in the context of the Shopify environment. In the second video, we learned what data is contained in your theme and what data remains the same while changing themes. And in the third video, we went over how to navigate your theme structure. In this video, we're going to cap off the series by talking about workflow. As an average Shopify seller, there's probably been a time when you wanted to integrate like a third party widget that required just a small code change in your theme. They may have given you, you know, a little snippet of code and asked you to include it in a certain part of your theme code. Maybe you went straight into the Shopify admin and you clicked edit code on your current theme, found the right file, inserted the code and hit save. That my friends would be the most basic way of changing your theme code. But let's say for instance, you're developing a whole new section and including it on a specific page, a page that is quite important to your business. Maybe this is the product page where people evaluate your product before making a decision. Suddenly it doesn't make sense or as much sense to live update your current theme anymore as any breaking changes will show up to the user straight away. This is where the idea of staging and workflow become important. If you're just including a small snippet of code on your theme, maybe your basic workflow is okay, but as you develop more complex features for your store, or your business grows to a point where the impact of a small change can make a significant difference to your user's experience, you'll want to start thinking more about workflow. The first precaution, and the one that is easy for anyone to employ, is to simply duplicate their live theme. Call your duplicate theme something like dev theme, just to distinguish it from the one you already have, and then make your changes to this new dev theme. The changes won't be live on your website, but you'll still be able to preview them through your Shopify admin. When you're happy with your new theme, you can either duplicate the theme and publish the duplicate, or you can directly publish your dev theme and then rename it to something else after you publish it. You don't want to leave it called dev theme after you publish it. This is how we can stage our theme code changes. But um, say for instance, we were working on a new page and we want that page to be linked up in our main menu navigation. Remember from episode two of this series, pages and navigation are part of your online store data. So any live changes to pages or navigation will apply to all themes. Now, when it comes to the page itself, we can mark the page visibility as hidden and then hit preview page but then we can't actually link that page in our navigation until it is published. This is where it starts to get a little tricky as we start to play a little game of cat and mouse with Shopify. You know, we could always have the page hidden until the very end, quickly switch it on, link it on our menu, and then publish our new theme. But there's always going to be certain times where certain things go live before others. Again, not a big deal depending on the size of your store or the page you're working on, but something to consider as your Shopify development needs get more complex. As I mentioned in episode two, the only way to ensure complete separation between all the changes that you're making and the current site is to create a separate store and then migrate the store data and the theme code over to the live store when you're ready. Let's look at a few example workflows. One, you can simply make the change. If it's a snippet of code you're inserting, insert it. If it's a new page, write it and hit publish when ready. This is the basic workflow. Second, you can stage your theme code. This is the process I mentioned earlier, where you take your live theme, duplicate it and work on the new version in private. Finally, you can create a whole new store, duplicate your store data onto the new store, work on all of your changes there, and then move the new theme and any store data modifications to your live store when ready to go live. In my experience and something that has become common practice for me is the second option. And I think for most people, besides the times when you're making, you know, a very basic code change, this is the process you should be taking when staging your theme code changes. So that covers the workflow when it comes to the Shopify platform itself, but there is one important factor missing here, and that is version control of our code base. As a developer, you should be familiar with something called Git. And then for those of you who aren't, it's basically a version control system 
for tracking changes in your code during software development. In this case, during Shopify theme development. To use Git in your workflow, which I highly recommend, you're going to have to copy your code off of Shopify to do this. And the best tool for that, as we've previously mentioned, ThemeKit. ThemeKit is a tool that I mentioned in the previous video. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I have that 20 minute lesson on setting up ThemeKit in lesson four of my Skillshare class on Shopify theme development. Now, if you don't consider yourself a developer, I wouldn't worry too much about adding this into your workflow as it does require an understanding of how Git works. But for those that do, here's how it affects your workflow. So taking the second example workflow, what you would do is set up a theme kit connection to your development theme. Then you would use theme kit to download your dev theme, open it up in your preferred code editor, run theme watch, and then get to work. With the theme watch command, each time you save, ThemeKit will detect that file change and upload that particular file back up to your Shopify store. At that point, just refresh the page you're working on and view your changes. Obviously, you'll want to manage branches and make commits to Git where appropriate, but I won't go into the actual Git workflow in this video as Git is a whole different topic in itself. And it's gonna be slightly different for each person depending on how they want to manage their code. All right. So in this series, we've explained what a theme is. We've learned how it sits separately to the other data in your store. We've learned how a theme is structured in the code. And finally, we've now discussed how you might go about making changes in a routine structured way so that you don't break your storefront every time you wanna make changes to your theme. Of course, this has all been quite theoretical. And while knowing this stuff is important, the actual practice of working on your theme is going to really strengthen your understanding of theme development. So with that in mind, let me ask you, what are some of the changes you'd like to make to your Shopify store? Leave your answers in the comments below and you might see your answer coming up as a future video on this channel. As for going deeper into Shopify theme development as a whole, check out the description box on this video as I'll be linking up some of my more in-depth resources on the topic. Thanks for watching this series on Shopify theme development and let me know what you want to see next in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for new videos. Also, if you can't wait for new videos on Shopify, definitely check out my course on Shopify. I'll link it up in the first link in the description. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next one.